Mendoza Show on Latest TV. Welcome to Mike Mendoza's Adrian Worthing Show. Well, we've got lots of great guests lined up over the next few months. Uh, and today, it's a pleasure to welcome a star from the 60s and 70s. His name is Rex Braley. Rex, welcome to you. Nice to see you. Hi, Mike. Um, behind me, photographs of Everlasting Love, Love Affair. And that's really where you made your name. Yeah. Still big. Well, Everlasting Love is, yeah. People know us from Everlasting Love because it's a massive hit around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll die with it. <laughs> It's something you've dined out on for many years. Yeah. Um, so it was world, worldwide, that song, and it's still being played. It was also a theme uh, in, a, in a movie, wasn't it? Yeah, well? it was in the, um, Wimbledon and a few other movies. It was on EastEnders <laughs> in the background and Coronation Street. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I love it. So you're still making a fortune out of it, obviously. I wouldn't say a fortune, but uh, doing okay. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in the old days, and I've spoken to so many musicians over the years, and big hits in the, in the 60s, ended up with absolutely nothing out of it. The record companies took virtually everything, managers took everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, you guys, I think, suffered as well for a while. We did, yeah, for about 18 years, mm -hmm. until Steve sorted it out with Sony, and we now get a fair pair every six months that the all are in November and April. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you guys were very controversial at one time, because if, if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong, um, you were almost um, front covers on the News of the World and everything else, because you didn't actually play any records. No, we didn't play on Everlasting Love, because we're touring in Scotland, mm -hmm. and we were committed to do the, the gigs in Scotland, so we needed to get the record out, so we flew Steve over to put the voice on with Keith Mansfield Orchestra, he went straight back to do the gig, came out number one, went on Jonathan King show, you didn't play any record, did you? No. Mm -hmm. We were quite naive at the time. We didn't, we were being totally honest. And then the News of the World, Love Affair, Don't Play on the Big Hit, Everlasting Love. And people actually thought we couldn't actually play. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Mm. I thought, oh, I just. You're going to swear then, I was going to swear, <laughs> <gonna> swear, <laughs> swear then. But I was, I was a blue guitarist for five years before I joined uh, Love Affair. Mm -hmm. Your, your, your first uh, song, well, the, the band's first song, was actually written by Rolling Stones. Yeah. Um, didn't get very far, unfortunately. Was it uh, Smart, She Smiled Sweetly? She Smiled Sweetly, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened to that? Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. Oh, it was really. That's before, before you I joined, your... yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So how will they find you from then? Uh, Terry Marshall owned Marshall Equipment, the amplifiers. Mm -hmm. I used to gig there every Saturday, uh, 10 guitars, just, uh, just have a jam. And he said, there's a band called Love Affair, never heard of them. Um, <laughs> you'll definitely get the, the, the gig because you're brilliant guitar. So you can't say that. Anyway, I went to, the, to Tottenham to a big, huge warehouse with the mm -hmm. square game, sorry. Um, I couldn't believe it, double drum kit, huge speakers. Steve said to me, can you play every little bit hurts by Steve Wimbledon? I said, well, yeah, what key? He flat. I said, you're joking. So I played it and then did a couple of solos and he said, the management said, yeah, would you like to join us? I said, well, but the other two are on guitar, are waiting to be auditioned. Out for Forget about them, will you join? So I said, I have to speak to my parents first, to be a bit, bit cool. And I was going home in my pink box, all Velox. Mm. I'm going to be in a band, that's what I wanted to do, go on the road. And we went on the road for, for three years, earning five pounds a week in a transit van up and down the motorway. That was our schooling. And then Everlasting Love came out, which is a hit you like, and told me, but you're not prepared for it, you really aren't. And was that virtually a hit overnight? It came into the charts, I think, what, number 17. Mm -hmm. Then we did a drop of the pops and then went, it's about eight, I think, and then it's number one. It was number one, I think, for two or three weeks. But it was manic, it was really manic, because it was number one all around the world. Yeah. Apart from America. We were, you have to have a hit in all the states, and it was only like 25 states we had hits. I think that's when I first saw you there, because I actually used to dance on Ready to Go. Did you? Yeah, afraid so. Um, we had to audition for that as well, would you believe? You were a ballet dancer. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that was a funny setup, because no one actually played, it was all mimed. Yeah. As well. Well, it's Top of the Pops was as well. Mm until they stopped it. But we went on uh, quite a few music shows which we actually played live. Um, mm. And the, the band were brilliant because Steve was such a great singer, and he still is, and he used to move on stage. When you, you know, when you play to people, they, they want to show, they don't just want you to play, they want to see you move and enjoy yourself mm -hmm. and smile. You still work with them occasionally, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I've done a few gigs with Steve. Mm -hmm. um, I've written a couple of songs with him, hopefully we'll record them. Are you, are you still in the music business? I know you left for a while. I formed a, uh, 
I formed a company called IFL International. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we had a 50,000 square foot warehouse at Heathrow and earned an absolute fortune. We were importing clo uh, clothing and gloves, marks and spencers and I had 50 people working for me in the warehouse and 10 staff in the, in the office. But I was bored, so I sold my shares and went back into music. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that ever since, since 1986. Uh -huh. Writing songs and I'm a record producer now as well. So I'm producing a band called Red Eye which is a fabulous band from Woking. They're like really young. They do stuff like Small Faces and The Who, but they've got that passion that would, they, they would definitely excel. Can you, can you sort of pass your experiences on to, onto younger bands now? Yeah, I can, yeah. Or, you, know, you, you know, the pitfalls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think management, you've got to be so careful. You have to be able to trust. And l luckily, um, Red Eye's man manager is um, the, the father of, his, he's a son-in-law. He, he married uh, his daughter. Mm -hmm. Sophie, and she's a singer as well. you just got to be so careful, you know. But you had a problem also with Love Affair, having, having a relation, uh, managing the band as well. Yeah, yeah. Which didn't help. No, it doesn't. No, I don't <laughs> think we, should, we don't need to go into that. We might, we might get sued, but he, he's dead okay. anyway. All right, we'll, we'll, keep, yeah. we'll move away from that. But I mean, you, you got despondent with, with the business and, and the band. But I'm totally conversant with it now, mm -hmm. and you have to be really careful about contracts. Luckily, I've got a really good lawyer. So when I get a contract for the band, we go through it with a fine tooth comb, mm -hmm. make sure there's no things in there that shouldn't be in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, I, I speak to so many bands where they want to buy themselves out of contracts. They say the biggest mistake they ever made was actually to tie up with a record company. That's right, yeah. I mean, I mean one person I spoke to, they, they thought, oh, we're making an absolute fortune here. Um, at the end of the day, they end up with literally pennies uh, because they don't realise you're going to stay in the great hotels, you've got the cars, you've got the chauffeurs, but you're actually paying for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, your royalties. And the stupid thing is with Everlasting Love, it was like a 45 record, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you get as much royalties on the A side, you, the B side, you do the A side. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? They give it to someone else. So 18.6 million records we sold Everlasting Love and the B side was given to someone else, which could have been us. We, we sorted that out with Ray River Valley, we just wrote all the songs. Mm -hmm. cause it, you make the money at songwriting royalties, yeah, not yeah. playing or anything like that. I mean, to get to number one now, uh, you don't sell that many copies, do you? Well, tw I think 25, 30,000. But you had sold but We sold 1.6 million to get to number one. Mm -hmm. Rainbow Valley sold uh, 967,000 and then you went to number six. Really? Yeah. And David Out Love the same, bringing back the good times the same, one road the same. Mm -hmm. But that was the late 60s, it's uh, totally changed now. Mm. My technology has changed a lot as well. It have has, you managed, yeah. uh, without saying you're old, uh, have you managed to sort of keep up with the technology? Very nice. It's not yeah. that problem, I can't keep up with it. How oh, dare you? <laughs> Look, I, I do, yeah, I can't do without a computer, because I've written a symphony, it's taken me seven years to write, it's classical, mm -hmm. I'm a classically trained pianist. And I actually do the notes and, and all the music and all the different parts, like violins, cellos, and things like that, mm -hmm. which I, I put on the computer, all the semi briefs and semi quavers and all that. So I've got the sheet music. So I want it to be recorded by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. So I have to have the music there for them to play. So I've done all that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, my wife died in January and I played the symphony at a funeral, and everyone was like crying. Well, I can't remember the funeral because I, I couldn't stop crying. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's a lovely piece. I, I, it sounds arrogant, but it is. It's in 18 different pieces, and uh, it's really nice. I'll uh, give you a copy. Uh, yeah, please. Be, be fair. We're running out of time, unfortunately, but number one, you, you're working with Scope these days. Yeah, yeah. Pauline Fox is the CV there, and I'm doing a bit of charity work mm -hmm. um, because I need to give something back to the community. I, you know, I can work there as and when I want to. This is in Worthing? In Worthing, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they've got three shops in Worthing, and I actually go to their shops and sort out the records to see what you can sell on eBay just for the charity. Mm -hmm. And it, I think I've earned about uh, 800 quid so far. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Like every, every penny counts, I think. It does. And, and also you've had problems with the human drink over the years as well. Uh, have you managed to battle that okay now? Well, <laughs> yes, I think mm. so. I, uh, what can one say about that? <laughs> just get us a large brandy and I'll tell you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, life, life is changing for you. Things are looking good. Well, I keep myself fit. I jog on the beach at five o'clock in the morning, which is mm -hmm. great, because I only go to bed at two. Mm -hmm. I don't need any sleep, because my head's so full of music, I wake up and I have to put it down, I have to tape it, so I don't forget it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm up, go on the beach for an hour, come back, have a shower, have some breakfast, watch latest TV, and then... Uh, Actually, you tell you the truth, folks, by the way, because he does watch latest TV. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I never heard of uh, Mike, but Pauline, the, the CRB at Scope, she, she knows him, but he doesn't know her. 
Born in Fox. All, they all know me. Yeah, they all know me. I'm, I'm incredibly famous. Yeah, he's as arrogant as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be arrogant to be successful. It, not, I'm not, not successful though. I haven't had the success you've had over the years. <laughs> you, you are successful. No, no, it's, it's all it's all in my mind. <coughs> uh, I think we sold 56 million records and still selling them all the time, which is great. Rick, the royalty's coming in. It's been a pleasure meeting and you. you Thank you, Simon. You keep well, much. and please keep going. I will Let do. us know how you're getting on. And I'll give you a copy of my symphony. I can't wait. Thank you so much indeed. It's Rex Braley from Love Affair. Welcome back to Mike Mendoza's Adrian Worthing Show here on Latest TV. Uh, well, in this part of the programme, I'm going to welcome in a, a gentleman who's the Ada Town Centre's coordinator or the Town Centre manager. He's had so many titles over the last few days. Uh, it's unbelievable. David Stedman, welcome. Good morning, Mike. Now, Shoreham used to be, and, and Southwick and Lansing were very sleepy little towns. Um, nothing ever happened. Suddenly you came along like a whirlwind, and, and the place has really taken off. Things happen all the time. Yes, I mean, particularly in Shoreham, obviously, it is very clear that uh, the initial uh, investment of a small amount of money brought in changes in the catalyst for change for Shoreham as such. Mm -hmm. And obviously, with the pedestrianised area in East Street now, the new bridge, and, and business is good for the majority of businesses in the town. And mm -hmm. all that comes back to commitment from the council a long time ago. You, a long time ago, were a councillor yourself. Indeed I was. Um, I won't say which party, but it wasn't Conservative, it wasn't uh, Labour, uh, it wasn't Green, and it wasn't UKIP. That's quite right. I was uh, a Lib Dem at that uh, time. In fact, you're a meeting at the moment, aren't you? They are indeed, but yes. I'm not involved in politics these really days. Nothing to, uh, do with nothing, nothing to do with politics at all. But when you were a councillor, did you think it was just a very sleepy town and you wanted to do something about it? Yes, I mean, obviously, at, at that time, and as there was difficulties with local government funding as there is even today uh, in that context and it was very difficult to uh, put things forward and help people in the way they needed help, particularly businesses. Mm -hmm. Now we have in Shoreham the Shoreham Farmers Market uh, which is every second Saturday. Indeed. It has won several awards already so yes. well done to you on that because that really is your baby. Yes, I mean it's grown from when I was first given uh, and taken the role uh, as town centre coordinator, I put the market on in 2001 and we started off with around about 13 small stalls and that's grown now to around about 35 uh, larger stalls and it's a very successful market and obviously benefits businesses in the town, brings mm -hmm. business people into the town for the businesses and indeed this year again we're up for an award for the best farmers market in Sussex. Mm -hmm. Not in the whole world? Not in the whole world, no. Unfortunately, there are other markets Damn. larger than, than, than Shoreham in certain you areas. You surprised me there. Really and the other thing you started, of course, is the Shoreham Artisans Market, uh, which was an excuse to put the Shoreham Farmers Market on twice, uh, but change the name. Yes, I mean, uh, the, the idea of that was to have a focus on arts and crafts rather than f only food. I mean, the Farmers Market is specifically about food, mm -hmm. although there are some uh, arts elements in it. But the, the, this was an idea to give artisans a, a, an opportunity for showing their, uh, their arts and crafts in, in, the, in a different forum. Mm -hmm. um, and that's growing gradually, it's taken a little while, but then the farmers market's been going for 14 years, so in a way it, it, it's got a long, longer history uh -huh. uh -huh. than we can. Yeah. Oh, are you really pleased the way it's gone? Are you surprised the way it's gone? I, I, am, I am particularly surprised about the success of Shoreham Farmers Market um, from, as you quite rightly say, a sleepy town, uh, not a lot of footfall at weekends, difficult business, and to attract the thousands of people that it now does, mm -hmm. I'm, every time I'm very surprised. Yeah. And I invite anybody to come along and see for themselves the, the businesses in the town and the far, obviously the farmers market and the artisans market. Now also, I mean, you have entertainers there as well, which is great. Yes, and I mean, that, that's part of it. It gives it an atmosphere. Um, and indeed now in East Street, it becomes quite cosmopolitan and there's quite a bit of busking going on when the weather's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and we've created a cafe culture 
uh, and it's completely changed the, the whole uh, ambience mm. of, of Shoreham. And of course, in, in the summer, you have uh, the, the uh, uh, some some affairs, some events, lots of things happening, well, which yes. didn't happen before. Yes, I mean we've we've obviously had f food and drink festival, chili festival, and, and over the last two years, we've put on a successful river fest, so celebrating Shoreham and its history and the environment and the river, mm -hmm. which equally has been very successful. Because yeah. until recently, the very first hovercraft was down there. Hover One was there. Yeah. Uh, sadly, it's been taken away now. Right. Uh, we've got Tyne Cheese Ferry there. Oh, yes, going to say we've got Tyne Cheese Ferry, and of course, the mine, if I'm correct, it's a minesweeper. Yep. Uh, oh, you're talking about German wine sweeper. German wine sweeper. <laughs> and sweeper, yeah. and some concrete boats, which I'm amazed they've floated. But yeah. there you go. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> well, it's been great seeing you. Thank you so much, and well done for all the work you're doing because it's absolutely thank amazing. You, you really have put Shoreham on the on, on the market on the on the on the map. Thank you very much, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. See nice you to meet you. Thank you. I just love this part of the show. It's uh, music time, folks, and I'm going to introduce you to a guy by the name of Bradley Hicks. Uh, Bradley's been solo for three years now, I believe, and also he's uh, done two UK tours recently, and he's got a brand new album out, and here's a song from the album. It's called Bated Breath. Slip 
Tady je jasné Fantastic. That's Bradley Hicks. Thank you so much to you for that. The CD is out now. It's available where? Uh, on iTunes, and it's called Candidates. Excellent. Thank you so much indeed. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you so much to everybody who's helped us today, to my own team, uh, to Coriander as well for all she's done for us today. Thank you. And to Market Bar 42 in Worthing. We'll see you next week. Have fun. Bye for now. <laughs>